turn with me to the book of 1 Samuel. To the book of 1 Samuel. And Tashana, leave your hand there in the fourth chapter. Marcy, I want you to go to the book of Leviticus. Leviticus, the 18th chapter of the book of Leviticus. God's going to talk in here tonight. The book of Leviticus, the 18th chapter. We were reading on last night. And I want you to really hear me uh, with intense ears tonight. We were talking last night about how the Lord began to raise up a word prophetically about how the children of Israel got ready to move the ark and God commanded Moses. For those of you who weren't here last night, I just hit it briefly, but I didn't stay there. But I got to walk through this tonight. He commanded Moses to choose seven priests and to have those priests to march before the ark of the covenant if they were going to ever use it now watch this the ark of the covenant is a power source of god in the old testament it was the thing that god chose to show forth his divine presence in the midst of a people now stay with me Stay with me because I got to break this down like this tonight. God said to me, I got to walk through this thing like this tonight. It represents a presence of the Lord. Now, this is what I began to notice. When God said for the seven men to get seven ram's horns and they were to blow the ram's horns before they were supposed to move the ark because the ram's horn was a representation of consecration which says if you try to move the ark and there is no consecration then the ark turns from being your help to your enemy God I feel the Holy Ghost right there I said I feel the Holy Ghost right there and so a lot of the chaos Myron, that we're seeing happen in the body of Christ to many churches. And when I say chaos, a lot of stuff that the greatest chaos to me is not to hear about a, a pastor who's fallen and whose flock is scattered. The worst chaos right now that is in the body of Christ is the kind of chaos where it looks like it's all together. But all behind the scenes is sin and degradation and mess. See, the worst kind of church is a church that have all of the right chandeliers and, and all of the right camera work and, and all of the right choir robes and all of that. But there is no power of deliverance in that church. Now, I'm not going to get a whole lot of amens right there because people don't like to deal with deliverance because deliverance means that I must confront the enemies in my spirit. I must become honest with God. And if I come honest with God, then there's going to be a manifestation of the things that are in my life that doesn't please God, which means my mask has to come off. Oh, Jesus. And so too many of us are getting worse in the church instead of getting better. We go to church more than we ever have, but we're worse off than we've ever been. Because you know why? We're trying to handle the word of God with no consecration. I'm not getting nobody to help me tonight, but it's okay. I got to walk through this. We're singing Zion songs with no ram's horn oh, I'm not getting nobody to say amen right there we're, 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 we're dancing and shouting with no ram's horn and we don't think that that is important but the book of Leviticus the 18th chapter and the 23rd verse what does he say Tashana what does he say Neither shall you lie with any beast uh -huh. and defile yourself with it. Uh -huh. Neither shall any woman yield herself mm -hmm. to a beast to lie with it. Uh -huh. It is confusion, mm -hmm. perversion, yes. and degradingly carnal. Uh -huh. Read it. Do not defile yourselves uh -huh. in any one of these ways. Yes. For in all these things the nations are defiled which I am casting out before you. And the land is defiled. Therefore, I visit the iniquity of it upon it. And the land itself vomits out her inhabitants. Now, 
now now watch this now 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 here God is giving fair warning and he, and he watch this and he's letting the people know now what's about to happen in your life what's about to come into this camp where the children of Israel I'm about to anoint some priests I'm about to take Aaron and his sons. I'm about to consecrate them with the ram's horn. I'm about to bring about a change. Now, understand something. You've been crying for my presence. But I want to warn you about something. Once you embrace my presence, there is no going back. Okay, I'm going to say this one more time. And I'm saying this as a prophecy in this church. Once we have, now I know last night we said that it was awesome in here and the presence of God was in this place. And even tonight, you can feel the anointing hovering. But what the Lord began to say to me on the way the church is, we cannot go back. See, this is not just a hot service where we jump and shout and we cry and we write a new song. No, something prophetic has happened in this atmosphere. Sphere. We have embraced a side of God that is not always available to the common church. And you cannot go back. You don't hear what I'm saying? You cannot touch this glory and then decide to go back to doing church as usual. I don't know if you got what I just said. See, because, because what? What's different about this? What's different about this service and this weekend that is the fact that God have not sent an evangelist. He has sent a prophet to blow the trumpet of the ram's horn. Now watch this. See, the ram's horn represents many things. But the first thing that God showed me about the ram's horn is that one of its representations is that when it is blown, it calls a people to attention. Oh, Jesus. When the ram's horn, now watch this, this going to get you. It is not to be blown to any people. In the Old Testament, it said that it was blown for the male Jewish men. But when the women found out that there was going to be a blowing of the trumpet, they came too. You don't hear me. And it was so important to God that the men of God heard the call to consecration. That the book said to me today that if somebody was missing out of the congregation the day that they blew the horn, they were supposed to inquire that somebody come to their house and personally blow the trumpet. I'm not hearing nobody say nothing. And so now we got a crippled church because you got women that are hearing the horn and the men are sitting somewhere looking all cool and upright. You don't get what I'm saying. And we going in breach first. Come on, y'all ain't said the women are not supposed to be the first partakers of this end time revival. The trumpet of consecration is to be blown for the men first. I'm not getting nobody to say amen right there. I'm not getting nobody to say amen right there. And that's the reason why women were praying in the home, but you don't see happening what's supposed to happen. Because there's a certain authority that God puts on the men. There's a certain trumpet that blows, that causes a man to stand upright. And when he does that, he takes authority over everything that's in the atmosphere of his house. And it is the man that pronounces to the house that we are consecrated unto the Lord. We're set aside for the master's use. I'll sit down, I'm not gonna go. I'm trying to, I'm trying to take my time and do this right. And that's why he said, when it is time for a church to embrace the trumpet, he said, call for the priest. He said, I want you to do three things. I want you to kill a ram and I want you to take the blood of the ram. I want you to anoint the right ear. You don't hear me. The right thumb. You don't hear me. And the right big toe. The right ear. So the church can hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. 
the right thumb so the church can grasp. You don't hear what I'm saying. How many times have we stood in this pulpit and preached to y'all and you don't grasp it? You don't hear me? The reason why you can't grasp it because you got to be consecrated to get a meal from the throne room of God. Anybody can preach you a message, but if you're going to be transformed into another person, you got to be consecrated so you can grasp it. Why do you think in this building tonight, I'm preaching now, and you got people sitting right next to you acting like God ain't even in here. Acting like they don't even feel God. And that's why when you come to church, you got to ignore your neighbor. Because the Bible said many are called, but few, ah, few are chosen. And the reason why you can respond when you hear about consecration, because it is your turn. He's calling you. You can't help yourself. You can't sit there in church and look like a lump on the log. The trumpet is blowing in your spirit, and you cannot reject the sound. Jesus. I feel God in here. I gotta take my time because I feel something. I hope somebody praying for me because I feel something in here. I hope I make it through this message. Too many of us, too many of us, too many of us hearing the sound and not responding. And one thing about the ram's horn in the Old Testament, it says, Pastor, that whenever it is blown, it is the only instrument in the Old Testament that demands a response. You don't hear me, you don't hear me. You don't, you don't, you don't hear the ram's horn and then you do nothing. You don't hear what I just said. You don't hear the horn of consecration and you're the chosen and you don't respond. I'm gonna say that one more time. See, you, you often think this, that you know what, Prophet Spider, I don't know why I'm going through so much. I don't know why I'm being put through the stuff that I'm put through because, I mean, my, my life is just, I'm just going through so much. And, and see, I just, I mean, I pray and, and, and all of that. But see, prayer is a different thing than answering the call to the ram's horn. Oh God, I'm gonna help myself in here tonight. See, see, singing in the church and worshiping God when everybody is here and the praise team is here and the microphone is on and all of that, that's a different thing than the call of the ram's horn. Because see, in the, in the Bible it said that a cow, a cow's horns could not be used because a cow represent an idol worship from Aaron and the golden calf. Are you hearing this? Now watch this, y'all. But see, when God began to talk to me today about the call of the ram's horn, he said, this is what's going to be the remnant of the people that's in the body of Christ. He said, because right now, the famous thing in the new fad is everybody goes to church. Oh yeah, the popular thing to do now is everybody is a Christian. You know, they, they get up and they, and they sing them love me up and suck me down songs. And they win an award and said, and I thank God who is over my life, who blessed me with this award. And everybody claps. You don't hear what I'm saying. And so now everybody is a Christian. So then God said, now when the end comes and the revival hits, I've got to make a difference between clean and unclean. Oh God. I've got to sin an arrow of deliverance in the body of Christ to separate those that are in the church and those that's been called out by the ram's horn. You don't hear me? And those that are responding by the calling of the ram's horn. The regular Christians will understand you because you will shout too hard. You will pray too long. You will sweat too hard. You will travail all night. You will turn your plate down for weeks. They won't understand. So... So the, so the ram's horn people are now persecuted by the church. How do, I, how do I know that I am a ram's horn person? Oh, Jesus. Lord, have mercy, God. I, I, I feel the Holy Ghost on me so strong. How do, how do I know 
But Proverbs, mom, I'm going through so much. I'm dealing with so many things. My life is a wreck. I mean, I'm praying, I'm fasting, and I, I, I don't know what else to do. I found out something. That the ram's horn, that the horn that is used from that ram, honey, the encyclopedia says that that is the only animal in the entire animal kingdom that has been tested to have the keenest ears in the whole animal kingdom. Yeah. He is the animal that warns all the rest of the animals when danger is near. Oh, you don't hear me. You don't hear me. There's too many things that's sneaking up on us as Christians. You don't hear what I'm saying because we don't have the ram's horn anointing because our ears ought to be sensitive to the things of the enemy. Oh, I can hear that. We ought to be able to say, watch it now. There's danger over here. How do you know it? I heard it in the spirit. Well, I don't hear nothing. I guess you don't, but my ears are ram's horns. I can hear what the spirit of the Lord is saying. Oh, I got it. That's why during this next season, people ain't gonna be able to understand you when you say, I can't go to the mall today. You're gonna be done got your purse and your outfit and your keys. You're gonna get in the car on your way to pick your friend up. You're gonna call us, I can't come. Well, why not? Because I heard something. Oh, I don't hear nobody in here talking back. You're going to be on your way to the mall and God's going to turn you around and send you to the church. You're going to be there all night long. They're going to say, where you been? I heard a call because my ears, a ram's horn ears. I heard something in the spirit. I've been sensitized to the voice of God and I've got to respond when I hear the trumpet blowing. That's why you can, you can sit there in your seat and you can rock like a traditional Baptist. I'm not getting no amens right there. You can sit there in your seat. You can act like you from the church of God in Christ. And you can quicken only when you hear A flat and C sharp. I'm not getting nobody to go back with me. You can sit there like a traditional assemblies of God and only wave your hand when your favorite worship tune is being played. But I got news for you. There's a horn being blown in this place tonight. And what used to excite you is not going to be able to excite you anymore. But you're going to become excited because you've been called to another realm of righteousness and holiness. Oh. He gonna say, he gonna say, put that down. Did you hear that? Put that down. Did you hear that? Don't say that again. Don't touch it again. Don't go there no more. Did you hear what I said? You don't hear what I'm saying. And I'm gonna tell you something. You said, but prophet is mine. How do I know it's me? Y'all sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down. I'm just, I'm just. Just calming myself down because, because, he, because I found out today, are you ready for this? That it's called shofar. It's a shofar horn. S-H-O-F-A-R. And let me tell you something. When I saw this today, I said, God, I understand. When pastor got up and said, what kind of an anointed, what kind of trial has she gone through to get that kind of an anointing? What kind of test? What kind of rejection? But when I read this in the encyclopedia, it said that a shofar, which is the ram's horn, first of all, pastor, is cut from the head of the ram. Then it's boiled. Then it's softened. Some of y'all too harsh for God to use you. I'm not hearing nobody say nothing. Some of y'all got to be boiled. That's the reason why there's some things that God has got some of us going through that he ain't finna bring us out right away because he got to keep us there. Good God have mercy. He's got to boil you in the situation because you know what? It ain't going to kill you. It's boiling you to soften you. Somebody getting that right there. Then my brother, after, after you get boiled and softened, then the book said that they take the ram's horn and they gut it out. Y'all don't hear me. 
they take a knife that's a special kind of knife and they go and dig up in that ram's horn and they scrape everything out of it they don't just scrape but they can see but they scrape the very walls of that horn because when the sound is blown it can't come out a different sound it can't come out having mixed signals because it's got to call a nation back on her knees. It can't come out sounding wrong. It can't come out sounding like the world. Because the ram's horn has got to call the people back to God. So he says, that's why, that's why Britney Spears can't call me to God. That's why my spirit can't respond to Luther Vandross. You don't hear me talking in here. I'm not hearing nobody talk back to me right there. That's why when I start hearing the sound, things that I used to enjoy, I can't enjoy it no more. Stuff that I used to can boogie on and change my dance because somebody done got in my ears and I hear the trumpet sound. I hear the horn blowing. Get ready. He's coming back again. You don't get what I'm saying. I don't mean to preach like that. Wait, 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 wait. Sit down. Sit down. It's gutted out. It's, it's, it's dug out. Marcia, until it's empty. Let me just break that down. Because we got some stuff that we have accumulated in the body of Christ that we call God, that God can use. So for the church, he ain't gotten out sin. He's gotten out tradition. You don't hear me. He's gotten out your customs. You don't hear me. He said, I want to use you, but you're too cluttered with what your denomination is telling you. You too clogged up with the PAW. You too clogged up with the Baptist church, the church of God in Christ. I've got to dig you out. I've got to gut you out because the sound that come forth is not a sound of religion, but it's the sound of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords calling his people. And pastor, this is the one that got me bad, Martin. I said, after he got you out, then the book said, I'm reading it, honey, in the order that it said, got you out. Then it put you under pressure. It said, then I got to take the horn while it's soft, while it's gutted out, and put it, come into shot, and put here you are, get on your knees. You said, I'm already weak. I've been bald to death. I'm going through. And you reach your hands up. Reach your hands up. Asking God to help you and give you strength. But you don't know that you're in the making to become a ram's horn. And so when you ask God to help you, he lean on you a little harder. When you said, God, give me strength, he pressed you on down. You don't hear what I'm saying. When you said, God, I can't take no more, he said, but you're going to take some more. Because this is not religion. When I raise you up, you're going to carry the weight of the world. You're going to pick up the burden of the Lord. I've got to put pressure on you. Unbelievable pressure. Undeniable pressure to everybody looking at you and say, how in the world can you take what you're taking? But you're going to open up your mouth and say, it is well with my soul. He knows the way that I take and when he's tried me. I'm getting you ready. I'm getting you ready. 
the very next thing he said, he takes you. Give me a hand. Hold this. He takes you while you're under pressure. And it says, then it drags you through the fire. Takes you through the fire. While you're under pressure. While you're weak. While you're struggling. You're experiencing going through the fire. Stay right there. Stay right there. And after he gets you in the fire, this thing got me right here. He, he punctures you. Because see, in the ram's horn, in the tip of it, there is no hole. Y'all ain't saying that. He got to make a hole. That's why you got people that are in the church that claim they got the Holy Ghost, but can't open up their mouth and praise God. You ain't got no hole. <laughs> you ain't got no hole. Oh, how, 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 how? How have you been called to consecration? How are you a child of God? And we can't even hear you say thank you, Jesus. And we standing right next to you because you a man-made viola. You ain't no ram's horn. You a man-made vessel. See, Saul got anointed by Samuel with a man-made vial. That's why his heart wasn't broken. Oh, y'all don't hear what I'm saying. He had it on him. God, I feel the Holy Ghost in here. I just felt something right there, baby. He had it on him because another prophet laid it on him. But David, before he became a king, he was out on the backside of the desert worshiping God and getting the anointing in him. So when David got anointed, he was anointed from a horn. You don't hear what I'm saying? And what was poured on him was already in him. That's why the church can't go nowhere. Because what God trying to pour on us is not in us. I'm a firm believer that when when it's poured on you then it only works it works for people you don't hear what I'm saying it works for image when it's poured on you you get accolades you get front row seats they call your name out y'all don't hear what I'm saying when it's poured on you they better not forget your name tag when it's poured out on you, they better not call your name. Not call your name and say you helped in the kitchen. But see, when it's in you, oh my God, Jesus, then you don't care if they don't never call your name. Because what you doing, you're doing it for Christ. The reason why I work in the kitchen, because I heard a horn blowing. The reason why I am a usher, I heard a horn blowing. The reason why I am a preacher, I heard a horn blowing way down in my spirit man didn't call me the ram's horn called me Watch this is the part that gets me while you in that fire but this is the thing that got me I didn't notice I didn't notice till I read this mother why are you in the fire the ram's horn, they come straight like this. Y'all ain't saying nothing. It comes straight. But the book said, when it gets in the fire, then the person that is making it, he twists that ram's horn. And he bends it and lifts the tip up, bent like this. And he said the reason why God required that they bend the tip because it represented a heart that is bent in the presence of God. You don't hear me. 
You don't hear what I just said. So God got to twist you and then lift your head up. You don't hear me. So in other words, you look deformed to people, but you're in the right posture for God. Somebody may say, you shout a little funny. You speak in tongues a little strange, but you gotta tell them I've been pulled. I've been twisted. I've been in the fire. I've been boiled. I've been pressed out. I know I look strange, but my heart is bent before the Almighty God. And you may not recognize me, but I'm not Sister Gwen. I'm not Brother Charlie, but I'm a ram's horn. I'm somebody that God can use. Oh, y'all, I feel the Holy Ghost in this place. He said, to shout him. He said, come here. He said, after, after you get twisted and they get you tilted, then they take some sandpaper and they just rub you. And that's when the folk in the church get on your nerves. Folk just rub you the wrong way. Folk trying to run you out of the church. Because it ain't nobody but the devil because he knows. He knows you a ram's horn. Y'all ain't saying that. And the devil said, we can't let her stay here. Because if she stay here and she starts shouting like that, revival going to break out. Because the Bible of the Lord told us that you can't blow the ram's horn and not get a response. And if we get a church for the folk that start blowing the trumpet, revival will break out all over this state. So he sends people in the congregation to rub you the wrong way, to get on your nerve. But you better make an announcement tonight. I'm not going nowhere. My feet are planted. I'm a ram's horn. See, you got to tell folk. You got to tell people. You got me confused. I may sit on this front row, but I'm here, baby, to blow a trumpet. Y'all, I ain't get nobody to say nothing right there. Oh, I, you may think I'm just a choir member. You got me confused with the Sopranos. I'm here to blow a trumpet. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. And see, the Bible says that not only is the ram's horn calling folk to attention, but this is the thing that got me, that when you blow the ram's horn, it also decrees a new season. Every time you blow it, that means if I'm in the winter of my life and everything is going bad, when I start blowing the trumpet, my season changes. I don't have to wait for a prophet. All I gotta do is consecrate myself in the presence of the Lord and start blowing up. And the devil got to back up. I start blowing up. And the shackles got to come out. I start blowing up. And the sick got to be healed. I start blowing up. And the blind eyes, they've got to open up. If I blow. Y'all going to make me hurt myself in here. I'm going to take some. Let me tell you this right quick. Baby. When you get through being sanded, then they polish you, shine you, and then they say, then they inspect you. They look you over. Twisted the right way, bent the right way, shaped the right way. They look down in there, don't see no debris in the tube, don't see no leftover flesh. Don't see no mucus that's done slid in there. Don't see no dirt particles. Everything is clean. Then he says, watch this. He said, then, he said, you get up. And then after you stand up, you're ready to be used. But I'm going to close this out with this. Because in the, oh, Jesus. Oh, God, this, Lord, you are really just, you are really tearing me up with this. It says here that when the ram's horn has been properly prepared go to psalms 47 oh god see because he said baby and i'm gonna finish this he said i'm gonna finish this somewhere 
he said, now this is the part that got me, mother, because the commentary book said that the only way, whoa, God. See, there was a mixture of the kind of oil that they had to make for the anointing. God, I'm gonna say something right here. Baby, there was a mixture that they had to make. And, and, and if in fact, Tashana, if they, if they used any other kind of vessel, then the oil would not flow out of that vessel right. You don't hear me. You don't hear me. You don't hear me. See, if they used silver, it'll come out too fast. If they used gold, it'll be too slick. But when they pour it in the ram's horn, because it is made out of cells, the oil saturates the inner walls of the horn. You don't hear me. You don't hear me. So the horn is able to hold the anointing until it is ready to be poured out. You don't hear what God is saying right there. Lord, I wish I had somebody to talk back to me in here. And he said, because the only way that you can get the oil of the anointing, Jesus had to go through a mighty sacrifice. So the oil can never be put in something that haven't paid a price to hold it. God, you better hear this. God, you can. The oil can never be put inside of something that didn't give its life. You don't hear what I'm saying. The ram had to give his life to be able to hold the oil. Jesus had to give his life to be able to hold the oil. You don't hear what I'm saying. And so God began to say to me, and I will never pour my anointing inside of a vessel that have not took the death walk. I will give my power to somebody who have not laid down their life as a sacrifice and told God, kill the flesh. I give up everything because you can't handle the anointing. You can't. You. I'm going to say something that is so awesome. Who holds the anointing? Yeah. Who carries the oil? Yeah. A dead man. You didn't hear what I said. A dead man is the only vessel that can carry the oil. Somebody who's dead to what folk think. Somebody who's dead to gossip. Somebody who's dead to religion. Somebody who's dead to, I don't care what you're looking at. I don't care how you talk about me. I don't care, I don't care. I don't care what you say about me because I'm after the oil. I'm getting myself ready. I'm dying to the enemy. I'm dying to the flesh. I'm preparing my vessel to be able to hold the oil because I got a witness in my spirit. The ram's horn has been blown, which let me know God has given me that poor something in my spirit. And I'm not about to miss God fooling around with you. I can't. I feel something. I feel the power of God on me so heavy I feel drunk. I feel drunk in here tonight. I feel drunk in here tonight. I told my husband, I said, I don't know if I'm even be able to preach because I just feel sick. I don't feel good. I haven't felt good all day. But God began to let me know tonight that's the only way you could have preached this because I don't need your strength. You don't hear what I'm saying. I need you to go. Some of y'all crying out to God, use me. Well, I'll tell you what you need to do. You need to go to a boiling point. You need to go for a fire walk. You need to get under some pressure. I ain't got nobody to say amen right there. You need to be lied on. You need to be talked about. You need to be criticized and rejected. You talk about God going to use you. Go somewhere and be stepped on. Go somewhere and let somebody dog you out. Go ahead and suffer the rejection. Stop your whining. Whatever you're going through right now is because God is birthing a vessel in you. He's trying to make you a vessel of honor and tell God, yes. Oh my God. He's looking for somebody to hold the oil. To hold it. I gotta quit. I gotta quit. It's got to be a sacrificial instrument. He said, because they don't all understand the power that's in the ram. He said, because the ram represents consecration. Emory, this is going to bless you. He said, here they are, Juanita. They're trying to fix everything they self because they're religious Christians. 
They're trying to work everything out themselves because they're religious Christians. He took my mind back. He said when Abraham was walking up to the place of sacrifice with Isaac, he looked over and he said, God, are you going to let me do this? He said, if I got to do it, then I'll do it. But I trust you anyhow. And God said, look over in the bush. I got a ram in the bush. That thing told me me up today pastor because what God was really saying that whatever your need is tonight uh, consecration is waiting in the bush hey 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 you don't hear what I'm saying consecration is waiting for you in the bush you need to get over there and get out of your flesh and get on your knees and grab a hold to the, that's why he said grab a hold to the horns of the altar you don't hear what I'm saying oh because the altar got horns because that's where the oil is flowing and get over there and get the anointing it's okay God y'all looking at me y'all looking at me strange tonight he said ram's horn he said you don't think it works it was talking about a battle of Israel that took place in 1967 and they had Israel pinned in to a pit. You remember that, brother? And Israel were being defeated because the, 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 the slant of the mountain was too steep to shine up for them to fight the enemy. So the enemy was overtaking them. And God sent a word to a rabbi. He got in a helicopter, paid the helicopter to fly him over the battleground. He pulled his head out of the helicopter and started blowing that ram's horn. And the Israelites overtook. They came up on that mountain like somebody had given them wings. You don't hear what I'm saying. I hear the Holy Ghost said that happened in 1967 and it'll still happen today if we can just find somebody in here to get consecrated and start blowing the horn. I double dare you to look over your crack at it child and instead of talking about it just start blowing the horn. I double dare you to look over your finances and get on your face before God and begin to blow the trumpet and watch and see what happens because he said here he said here he said here, in Psalms 47, I quit with this. Lord, I feel you, God. I feel you. 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 Turn the heart of the Lord. You can't go back. Oh, Jesus. See, I got something to tell you. In the regular King James Version, when you look at the King James Version of the book of Psalms, in that book, it spells out a word, Hebrew word. There's a code in that chapter that says, Kera, K-E-R-A, Satan. Kera, Satan talks about blowing the trumpet in high places. The translation for care of Satan is tear Satan up. <laughs> See him here tonight right now. As I begin to preach, I watched the church people go into confusion. And I watched the remnant come alive <laughs> let me tell you why this is so important before I take my seat tonight let me tell you. because see when the trumpet sounds it makes the same sound it is an identical sound to glory it says trumpet but trumpet means Ram's horn. It means shofar. Because back in the Old Testament, there was no trumpets. The only trumpet was the ram's horn. Now watch this. When that horn is blown, it is the final sound of the final conflict when Jesus cracks the sky. You don't hear me. You're not, li you're not listening. They're not listening, Mark. Which means that every time a believer consecrates, 
blows the trumpet, Satan thinks Jesus is here. So every time you go on a fast and a consecration and you shout glory, he start running. All of hell start running. You don't get what I'm saying. You don't get what I'm saying. That's why you can't keep your mouth shut. That's why you can't let the devil keep making you up the day and down tomorrow. You gotta get some ram's horns. Confusion is happening now in the kingdom. Now I know that this is just not something that people say when they preach. I know that Satan's contract over my life is being canceled. I know that the plan of the enemy is being confused right now. Y'all didn't hear what I just said. You didn't hear what I just said. You couldn't have heard what I just said and just stood there like that. That means if anybody in here tonight heard this word and received it, confusion have just hit the enemy's camp. The Bible said that when the children of Israel began to blow their trumpet, it was 300 of them. It said the enemy took their sword and turned on themselves. You don't know, hear what I'm saying. If you got some enemies, blow your horn. If the enemy is coming against you, blow your horn and the devil will confuse himself. quit I feel something just broke I feel something just broke I feel something just broke I just heard the Holy Ghost say you don't have no troubles as long as you got a horn you ain't got no problems all you gotta do is open up your mouth and begin to shout let the redeemed of the Lord say so What they say when the ark came. See, you ain't got to worry because the latest weapon against the believers is other Christians trying to use the Bible against the believers. Y'all ain't hear me. See, the greatest attack in the church now is other people who are in error and quoting scriptures using the word against you but I'm reminded of a group of people one of them was Eli's sons that thought they was going to use the word without consecration they got into a battle they end up losing the battle and losing their life when Eli heard the news he fell backwards and broke his neck and then what they did was they said we'll take the ark over here to this trap got it over there what no consecration the word turned against them y'all don't hear what I'm saying you ain't got no enemies anybody in the church that's trying to use the word on you and they don't have no consecration look on keep on looking at them because after a while the ark is gonna turn on them they said get this thing out of here it's killing us all you have boils that's coming up they took it to the camp of Ekron they got it over there boils start coming they said get this thing out of here you know why because everywhere they took it and there was no consecration and there was no ram's horn to hold the anointing now I know what the Bible said that the letter kill it but the spirit give it life you don't hear what God just said they said wait a minute wait a minute we're gonna take it over here and we're gonna take it over here in the camp of Dagon where the idol God and they said they took that ark and they propped it up 
next to an idol God. Wasn't nobody leading it. <laughs> Wasn't nobody driving it. <laughs> Wasn't nobody doing nothing to it. <laughs> they set it up there next to an idol God that everybody's been worshiping. <laughs> they set it up there next to denomination. <laughs> they set it up there next to Bishop so-and-so who ain't got no prayer life. <laughs> they set that thing up there by itself <laughs> against just a so-and-so <laughs> who call herself an intercessor <laughs> but sleeping all over the church with everybody. <laughs> They set it up there uh, next to the gossiping prophet. Uh, they set that thing up there uh, next to the lying evangelist. Uh, and the Bible said when they set it there uh, and they came back the next day, uh, the idol had been knocked over uh, on his face by the power of God. Uh, they came back uh, and they put the pastor back in his place. Uh, he still hadn't repented, uh, but they propped him back up there. I'm not getting no amens right there. Evangelist so-and-so never repented to the church for having a baby out of wedlock they just propped her back up there the choir members never cleaned their lives out they still sleeping with their boyfriend oh y'all don't hear what i'm saying they still tipping and diving they just come sunday we just prop you back up there but the bible said that the next time it got propped up it was as if the holy ghost said did you hear what i said he not only did he knock it over but when he knocked it over he knocked knocked his head off. He knocked his hands off. He knocked the legs off. And the only thing that was left there is a torso with no direction. A torso can't move. A torso can't help you in the church. And pastor, oh my God, I give the Holy Ghost and be encouraged. Because what you see happening now is the power of God is knocking the heads off and knocking the arms off. And that's why some people that used to help you, they can't help you no more. Because all they are is a torso. They don't have any legs. They don't have any hands. They got in disobedience. And now they're just a torso. So he said, get this thing out of here. They said, what, what, what are we going to do? They said, I'll tell you what we do. Okay, somebody got real smart. Somebody said, you know what? Them consecrated people is the only people we know that can move this thing and not get killed. Y'all send over there and get some priests. Go get some Levites. Y'all ain't saying that. Oh, y'all ain't saying that. Go get us some consecrated folk. And that's why you ain't got to worry about it. Because I just heard the Holy Ghost said the first shall be last. And the last shall be first. I just heard the Holy Ghost said that there's about to be a changing of the guards. And people that used to be in the back, they coming to the front. People that used to be in the front, they going out the door. You don't hear what I'm saying. Because now God is saying, I'm ready to move this thing. I'm ready to move this church. I'm ready to move this ministry. And I need some folk to get out of my way. Call for the leave. Call for the fasting women. Call for the mourning people. Call for the consecrated one. It's time to move. Oh. See, Pastor, I didn't know it, and you didn't either. And I just thought God just wanted me to come prophetically. I just knew that God wanted me to come in this place. And I didn't know why now, but I just saw it. You can't move to the next church with the same old people in the same old state. God is saying that the ark of the anointed that is in this house, it's got to be walked over in the next building by consecrated people, by blood washed people, by fasting people, by praying people. They may not be a preacher, but they gotta carry the power. They may not be an evangelist, but you got some folk that are in your congregation that's got power, that's got yoke breaking power, that's got demon chasing power. As a matter of fact, I just saw some. I just saw some in the spirit. Can I tell you what I just saw? I just saw some. You can't march over there without me. You can't march without me. I saw myself marching with you, going in the church. I saw myself walking up the road. Don't march without me, Pastor. I saw in the Holy Ghost an ark of the covenant. I saw your ministers and preachers carrying the ark. 
I saw us blowing the trumpet. Something else is waiting for you in that new building. You will not take the mantle that's in here over there. But as you begin to walk, a greater power, a greater anointed, a greater manifestation. God, I feel the Holy Ghost in here. I feel the Holy Ghost. I've never done that before. But I got to walk with you as a prophet of God, prophesying all the way that the glory of the Lord, it shall be revealed. The glory of the Lord, it shall be revealed. There's a new anointing that's stepping up on you. It's coming up on you. Think it not strange, but I hear the Holy Ghost saying, for in you, man of God, I have twisted you. I have pounded you. I have punctured you. Now you're ready to hold the oil of the anointed. Somebody in this house, you better start praising God because God just broke something open in the spirit realm. No, you ain't praising him. Come out here and praise him. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. A radical praise. A radical praise. Come out here and give him a radical praise. Wait a minute. Some of y'all just waving your hands. I said a radical praise. You don't get what I'm saying. You don't know what just broke in this house. And if you're standing in here, it just broke in your house. It just broke in your church. Give him a praise. Come out here and praise him. God, I got to quit. I got to preach two more times. But he gave me this scripture. When I just prophesied that, I never even read that. I just opened up my Bible in the Amplified Version and round about. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. The 47 verses. Oh, clap your hands, all ye peoples, and shout to God with the voice of triumph and songs of joy for the Lord most high excites terror awe and dread he is a great king over all the earth now let me tell you what that means when God said clap your hands when God says shout when he said I'm exciting terror that means as you praise me I'm tearing up your enemies as you glorify me I'm putting your enemies to death as you give me glory no weapon that's formed against you is going to be able to prosper he said praise him Now this is the part that got me. This is the part that got me. The fifth verse said, God has ascended amid shouting. That means he wasn't doing nothing but sitting there watching us. But the minute we start shouting, he ascended. He, no, y'all didn't hear that. You didn't hear that. When you start shouting, it moves God. When you start shouting, it causes heaven to get up and move in your behalf. You better give him a shout. Hell. Give him a shout. Come on, give him a shout. I got to shout. I need God to work for me. 
I got to shout. I needed to work something out. I got to shout. He got to heal my body. I got to shout. He got to save my children. I got to shout. Hey! 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 Give him a shout! trying to make me quit. They done took my Bible. They done pat me on the back. Those supposed to be my signals that you got to quit now before you hurt yourself. But tell your neighbor that I just got through shouting because the prophet said shout. But this time when I shout, God is going to get up in my business and everything about my life is getting ready to be turned. your neighbor on your left and your right and if they still got that little stiff look move your seat now tell your neighbor I don't mean no harm but I'm working on something I'm working on a miracle I'm working on a breakthrough I'm working on some deliverance give them a prize 